In less than 24 hours, a YouTube video of high school girls brawling at the McDonald's behind me received more than three and a half million views. Now, it's not the first time a fight at this McDonald's has gone viral, prompting a proposal banning students from eating there during specific hours. Gary, what do you have? Well, have you ever bought something with your debit card that didn't cost much, but then got a $35 overdraft fee because you didn't have enough money in the bank? Well, you're not alone. The United States and China have a very um, interesting relationship. How does Taiwan navigate through those diplomatic waters, and, and does that relationship affect the stability of the economy in Taiwan? It's very simple. The relationship between the United States and China and the United States and Taiwan are not zero-sum game. Now this is your last year and you've accomplished so much in your career. What's the one thing that you want fans to remember about you? Hopefully that we won this year. Sounds good, Captain. Now just to give you an idea of the magnitude of these wildfires, the Texas Forest Service estimates that more than one million acres have already burned. The flames have scorched everything in sight, from homes, trees, even highway signs. Taiwan is the second largest producer for computer hardware in the world and occupies more than 70% of the market share for photoelectric, semiconductor, and information and communication products. America is suffering the worst drought in decades. While some parts of the region have received rain recently, many feel it's too little, too late. Here's Gary with more. All right, thanks a lot, Derek. I'm here with Adam and Matthew, who just won a subscription to Yankees Magazine for an entire year. Here you go. The Yankees organization believes they have a lot to be thankful for, including the community that surrounds and supports them. And they want to make sure as many Bronx residents as possible are able to experience a nice Thanksgiving meal. One man is dead after a new outbreak of Legionnaire's disease was discovered. Although it was thought that the disease had been contained, 12 people in the Bronx began experiencing symptoms in early September, prompting many in the area to wonder if Mayor de Blasio is doing enough. The bags are stuffed with goodies like flip-flops and Yankee hats, but they're also stuffed with everyday items like pencils and razors. Now, these items may seem small, but they're a huge help to soldiers stationed overseas, especially those serving in remote areas. Hey everyone, Gary Hamilton here in the Audi Yankees Club with Chef Ben Pollinger, who's the executive chef of Oceana Restaurant in Midtown Manhattan and the author of the newly released book, School of Fish. Chef, good to see you. Hey Gary, great to be here. All right, now what are we making today? We're gonna be making some wild Alaskan halibut. Can't even get your jumps because you're looking out the window. Ready, it's go. not for the weak of heart or for Damn. journalists who thought this workout Damn. couldn't be that hard. You don't show up in here talking about you want to do a workout and don't push through it. It's not an amusement park! And while I admit I quit during the workout, which is Trey's biggest no-no, he's teaching them that defeat is a choice. You know, we've seen video all over the news and pictures all over the internet, and I have to say that nothing you see on television compares to the damage and destruction that you see here with your own eyes. In 1789, America's first president, George Washington, was inaugurated in New York City. Washington, a slave owner for most of his life, would eventually die just a few miles outside of present-day Washington, D.C. Nearly 224 years later, on Martin Luther King Day, people from all over the world will gather here in the nation's capital to witness America's first African-American president, Barack Obama, be sworn in for the second time. So, Stephen, if I mess up your Rubik's Cube, you think you could fix it? Of course. You sure? I know I can. To his parents, he's just Steven. Hey everyone, Gary Hamilton here with your MasterCard Priceless New York ticket upgrade of the game. We brought these lucky fans who are sitting all the way on the 400 level down to the 100 level, and it's all courtesy of MasterCard. Since the towers fell behind me on September 11th, there have been dozens of reported plots to attack the U.S. by Islamic terrorists living here in America. You know, we've seen video all over the news and pictures all over the internet, and I have to say that nothing you see on television compares to the damage and destruction that you see here with your own eyes. Even after two days, I, I'm still just completely in shock. Mangled cars, crushed trees, 
and only huge piles of rubble where an entire neighborhood once stood. At least three dozen people were killed by the powerful storm system that swept through the Midwest on Friday. I mean, it feels like a dream. Everybody's depressed, but I think if we all stick together, we'll get through this. More than 80 tornadoes were reported in just one day. That's as many as usually are reported in an entire month. Within a short time, two tornadoes hit the town of Henryville, Indiana. One was rated an intense EF4 with winds roaring up to 175 miles per hour. The roof of the high school was torn off, but students had just been evacuated. It's gone. The whole newer wing that we just built is gone. Um, I, I've seen pictures of like the gym and the front office where I used to walk in every morning and it's just destroyed. Ashton Kasky hid out in her basement during the storm. The whole house was rattling. It was all shaking. The, I mean, you could hear, you could hear everything. You can see there was a nice car in there, a little motor, motorcycle, it, it's, it's all gone. The National Weather Service says the first tornado measured about 150 yards across. That's the length of one and a half football fields. It was on the ground for nearly an hour. Some Henryville students like Ashton say the only thing the tornado didn't destroy at the school are their memories. I've always wanted to finish out my senior year at Henryville, but I don't know that it's going to happen anymore. At this moment, we don't know where we're going to go. Hopefully we just stay together. Residents are hoping the deadly start to tornado season doesn't signal another year like 2011 when 550 people across the U.S. were killed, the deadliest year in almost a century. Hey. I did not want you to become a um, statistic. Now, I know you warned us about a lot of things growing up. I mean, what were some of the things you used to tell us? When you went into the store, always make sure that uh, whatever you purchased, uh, you received a bag. Uh, when you made that purchase, I did not want anyone to think that you were actually stealing anything. It was important for you all to get a receipt when you made a purchase. I mean, you specifically would say, like, get a receipt because they love to put, put you... young black boys in jail. Okay, right. So. The death of 17 year old Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager who was shot and killed by a neighborhood watch group leader, has sparked a national debate about race. Although the investigation is still underway, some allege the tragedy in Florida could be a deadly case of racial profiling. Racial profiling is something parents of black sons worry about and have been concerned about for generations including my own mother. My brothers and I grew up with my mom's fears and anxieties. It was something we heard almost every time we left the house. I felt like it was necessary for me to tell you all that as a warning, as a precaution. Um, what's going on right now, it's really nothing new. It's something that's been going on for, for a while now. It's just that it's really in the public's eye right now. Like many African-American parents, my mom was worried we would be targets because we're males and black. And she may have been right to be concerned. The Children's Defense Fund has done some research and found that young black people are twice as likely as young whites to be arrested. And black youths are more than four times as likely to end up in a juvenile detention center. The group also found that while Hispanic, black, and white teens are equally likely to use drugs, black teens are almost twice as likely as whites to be arrested for a drug offense. I feel as though my life is already prejudged for me as in what I'm going to do is either I'm going to go to prison, become a criminal, or die. Yes, like me, expensive. both Darian Edwards and Kenneth Bell grew up in Houston, Texas. Kenneth is in the top 8% of his graduating class. He says being born a black male in this country means that may not be enough. I feel as though there is a strike against you because you're black. My dad always told me that, that you always have a strike against you. So. But Everything that you do is going to be magnified, and that you have to work twice as hard to get what you want. So when you walk into a store, are you conscious, or do you think that somebody may be watching you more closely because of the color of your skin? Definitely. I always feel like I'm being watched. But even as of now, even before the Trayvon situation, my mom told me if I ever go into a store, to never wear my hood on my head if I have a hoodie, because they're already going to be prejudging me. These teens say they could see themselves in a situation similar to the one involving Trayvon Martin. 
I just feel like with that situation, it could have been me. Me not wearing a hoodie is not going to change the way that people view me because my skin color isn't going to change. Both Kenneth and Darian are headed to college next year, hoping to change people's attitudes. So do you guys think that this can change? Hopefully it will change. I'm hoping that it will change. But I don't definitely know if it will, but I'm hoping that it can. Me personally, I feel like that it will definitely change, but it has to start with the justice system and seeing that justice does come and that people just view us and give us those equal opportunities. And although my mom raised three college graduates, including one lawyer, she's not so sure. So when you see my seven-year-old nephew and your seven-year-old grandchild, uh, in 10 years he'll be Trayvon's age, do you think that he'll have to deal with some of the same problems that young black males are dealing with now? Unfortunately, I do believe that he will be dealing with the exact same issues that we're dealing with today. Gary Hamilton, CBSNews.com. For every head of kale that's in this pen, I'm getting a scoop of chop. Every day before and after school, John Epperly does his daily chores, preparing chop for the cattle, feeding milk to the newborns, and baling hay. Farming is tough, and this year's record drought isn't helping. The drought is devastating to farmers because of the fact that that is, it's like our income. I know some people are even going out of business because of this. America is suffering the worst drought in decades, affecting more than 60% of the U.S. The Department of Agriculture has designated more than 1,700 counties, including 10 in the state of Ohio, as natural disaster areas. Just by seeing like the height overall, the stocks, and the, the stocks are shorter, and the ears, you can see, they're a lot smaller. And when you peel them back, you can see there's very poor development of the actual ear. The U.S. corn crop is expected to drop to its lowest level in nearly two decades, and the soybean production forecast at a nine-year low. Although John's family won't harvest what they expected from their corn and soybean crops, he says his family got the better end of the drought. 200 miles away in southwest Ohio, fields are brown and burned. How much uh, product we've lost of uh, corn and whatnot, uh, I'd say around uh, 90 percent. Karen, whose family has farmed in this area for almost 100 years, says the tough years of drought keep coming. This year has been really, really bad, but it's also been really bad the past three years. Um, we've just been getting by the past three years, the past four years, and just that year after year after year after year, you kind of get tired of not really making any, any money. If there's no rain, there's no water for the crops to grow, no hay for the livestock to eat, or water for them to drink. So farmers have to spend their hard-earned money to buy water from other places, and that can add up quickly. So for someone like me who's never a day in his life worked on a farm, how can this drought impact me way in New York City? Well, in, a, in a lot, a lot of ways. Okay, so you walk in your supermarket, um, you look to your left, and there's a bag of chips. See, if you look at the ingredients, there's a million things. I'm, I guarantee you, uh, corn, high fructose corn syrup is going to be on it. Uh, corn starch, it costs so much for us to, um, to grow it. It costs us so much more for the consumer to buy it. While some parts of the region have received rain recently, many feel it's too little, too late. For Karen and other farmers, each day is a roll of the dice. Farming is definitely gambling. Uh, you don't know, you're going in hoping that you're going to come out with a good crop. If it doesn't rain, something bad, a disaster or something happens that year, you come out with not, hopefully something. Gary Hamilton, <laughs> Channel 1 News.